while roommate showers, I record. So, I'm starting to remember the things she told me so vividly now. It's amazing what a creative project can do to get your mind turning. What should I tell first? The Land of Wind and Shade. That is where the story starts. I see. Which story exactly? Her story or yours? Mm, both, as a matter of fact. My story began with the tragedy on Lois, which led to meeting her in the first place. And then she used my memory of that tragedy as a starting point for her story, which turned out to be related. Hey, fascinating! I do love stories. I know. I'll start with mine, since that will make everything else make sense. So go ahead and start drawing. What? Lois! Right. How's this? Looks good. Don't forget to put a really tall house poking out of the top. Oh, yes, of course. So you say your story begins with a tragedy. What should I draw next to depict that tragedy? Nothing yet. I'll get to that. But yes, the tragedy is why I was alone on the golden ship. It was not long after our three-year journey began. I was relaxing in our makeshift living room, giving John and Dave Sprite some spaces for themselves for a while so they could catch up. John wanted to visit his home again, so I happily obliged and shrunk them both down so they could hang out in his tiny tall house. It seemed like the nice thing to do, but I came to regret that decision more than anything I've ever made. I was minding my own business when out of nowhere, and this is, this is interesting. Lois exploded! I couldn't believe it. It was totally inexplicable. There was no trace of them at all. They were both dead. I supposed it must have meant John's death was heroic, but couldn't for the life of me imagine how. To me, it was as pointless and arbitrary as a death could be. Jade, are you poking at the story? I looked within myself as hard as I could to see if there was some power I had in all my comp omnipotence to bring them back. But I couldn't. They were gone. I would spend the next three years in that ship without my two best friends. Sure, there were still concerts and chess guys to keep me company, but the loss was too much for me to bear. I felt so alone. Weeks and months went by. I didn't have the slightest sense of how quickly or slowly time was passing. Any sense of purpose to reaching the destination vanished, and the delicious as though it was, no amount of Nana's cake would bring me comfort. Toward the end of the journey, when I was feeling particularly despondent, I fell asleep and had a dream. And it is then when I met a very powerful, strangely charismatic creature. Her name was Calliope. As I said, she was somewhat like you, and yet so unalike. Her presence was so serious and grave. Her hollow eyes were piercing, but not hostile. But the prevailing sense I got from her was one of loneliness. Before she even said a word, I could feel it somehow, that this was a deeply lonely soul. Until I met her, I thought I was the loneliest person in the universe. But a feeling told me she had been here by herself for a long, long time. I felt sorry for her, and relating to her plight helped me overcome the feelings of intimidation. So we began to talk. We traded stories about ourselves. She spoke of the brother she killed. I spoke of the brother I lost. And when I mentioned John's death, that is when she became very serious again. She began to recount how John had died, repeating to me the same story I just told you. She described the spontaneous destruction of Lois, which left me alone for years. I wondered why she was recounting this tragedy that happened to me, and for that matter, how she knew of it herself. She went on to say that Lois was destroyed because John's denizen had suddenly woken up. Typhius, a great monster of truly terrifying power. She said he had destroyed his land and slayed his own heir of breath, not out of malice, but to make a slight correction. I asked her, What do you mean, correction? She said that the John from my reality and his entire planet needed to be erased that the slumbering denizen in all his mysterious wisdom knew this. She told me that the dreams of a denizen draw from the same well of potential from which every conceivable possibility arises, the same place Skya gets its power from. So if an agreement with a denizen is reached in one reality, that same denizen in another reality could become aware of it and respond accordingly. It seems that John, somewhere in some other plane of existence, had made just such an agreement. She said that the John I knew, like herself, was only one version of a person. There was a different version of John from another reality poised to play a more significant role. You see, the John from that reality in an act of desperation had gone to see Typhius and struck a bargain with him. She would go on to explain the nature of that bargain in the next part of her story. But from my perspective, the consequence of this bargain was to lose my friends and to live with that for years without understanding why. Losing them still hurt, but I was so relieved to at least understand the reason and to realize their senseless deaths were actually serving a bigger purpose. I thanked her for letting me know. 
This is interesting. This is not what I expected to go. She told me she was not human and had no frame of reference for empathizing with my feelings. But if there was one thing she could relate to, it was the feeling of being alone. The feeling of waiting for what seemed like an eternity by herself until finally your purpose presents itself. I feel sorry for her. Uh, for myself, I suppose. But then again, that feeling is nothing new. <laughs> it's an old statement she made, though. What? Not having the frame of reference for empathizing with human feelings. If you asked me, I would say I had the vantage to relate to both humans and terrors, so when you describe your feelings of sadness over losing friends, I had more than enough grounds for commiseration. Do you think this version of me never... Never what? Never had human friends like I did? I have no idea. What a strange thought. To grow up with only my brother for company, not even my human friends to get me by. What a dreadful fate, the poor thing. Maybe that was the difference. What had predominate over her brother, whereas I was too, um... Humanly socialized to succeed in my terrific rites of passage? Could be. I don't know enough about cherub rites of passage to say either way. Human rites of passage, either, for that matter. So then what happened? Right, anyway. That's when she began her story in earnest. The one she summoned me in my dreams to tell me. The story of the other John who made a deal with Typhius. It began with the same place mine did. Loas. So go on. What? Draw Loas again. Oh, wait. All over again. Um, no, you can just copy the first one you did. That's a lovely idea. I'd hate to hold up the pace of your exciting tale with a bunch of superfluous tootling. Good enough? Yes, but there are also supposed to be glitches around. Glitches? What do you mean by glitches? Like, computery glitches, I think. That sounds hard to draw. I can link you a tutorial, Calliope, on Tumblr. Okay, why don't we not worry about showing the glitches for the story? They would just make it harder to see what's going on. Which is probably the point now that I think about it. <laughs> the point? Of what? I never thought much about it. It just seemed like a weird detail she mentioned. But I guess it was some strange form of corruption in their session that made everything harder to understand. Where did the corruption come from? No idea. I guess it was just one more way everything got messed up for them. Like, just another surreal obstacle for a hero to overcome? Oh, that reminds me, you need to draw John there as well. right -o. There you go. One here, sudden surreal obstacles. <laughs> when she mentions that I didn't give it a second thought, but now that I'm trying to reconstruct everything and tell you what to draw... Hmm. Hmm? I guess when you're trying to tell a story, it forces you to think a lot more about everything than when you're just listening to one. That's quite true. Perhaps you should stop writing. How did she begin? Well, let me think. Hmm, maybe we should pause before I go on? Pause? Like, some sort of intermission, so I can collect my thoughts a bit, and to give the audience a little breather between two significant arcs. We were at it for a pretty good while there, after all. What? Audience. Well, that would be you in this case. Oh, I know. I can doodle a quick story about the antics of the silly concerts and the golden ship before moving on. <sighs> One of the things they did to pass the time in the ship was give them funny names. Let's meet our cast of characters with intermission, shall we? Hmm, let's see. There was... Bubbleupagus, Thips Ahoy, Knackby Nimble, Slowpoke Malone, Jade. Detective Glubs Budget, Fidgety Herbert, Dr. Snossish's Yif Yif. Yif Yif? Jade! Huh? I'm sorry, but I don't care about this right now. Your concert friends are very cute and the names are silly and I love them all, but I want to hear the rest of the story. Please, let's go back to illustrating your story. I'm so curious. Please, 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 please. Wow, okay, sorry. Yes, you're right. This is a stupid diversion. Let's continue. Um, Callie, your hand. Oops. <clears throat> Pay no attention to that. Do carry on. Oh, her hand went all claw. <laughs> Baby. This is interesting. I'm not sure what to expect. Which I like. I like that I don't know what to expect. <laughs> Guess who fucking forgot it was Monday. <laughs> oh, I went to bed early last night, so I'm up like super early, but I'm exhausted, so... Before I start tumbling and spoiling myself, I might as well <clears throat> continue. Mm. My screen is dirty. I thought Jade had a lip ring. So, anyway, like I said, she just finished telling me that she was able to beat her brother in this reality. But apparently that wasn't supposed to happen. 
so she lived out the rest of her life in a doomed timeline and eventually died. She didn't mention how, and then... And then she did this kind of fancy transition? Darn, I don't think I'll do it justice. A transition to a story about my brother, who was stuck in a doomed timeline too. I think I'll mess it up if I try to match what she said word for word. She had a really fanciful way of putting things. There's no need to try to recite what she said. Just tell the story in your own voice, as you've already been doing. It'll be more fun that way. Okay, so the bottom line was, almost all our friends had died, and John's only hope was to return to his planet and attempt to complete his personal quest. Which is where we are now, I guess. As you know, we all have personal quests that are unique to our planets. Nature of the quest is, to nev is never easy to understand at first. They are presented to us through enigmatic riddles conveyed through the lore of the land. For John, it was to journey to the place where constellations danced beneath the clouds. It was said the air of breath was to free the stars from the shade and release them into heaven. This was just a mysterious way of saying what he really had to do. The stars were actually fireflies. They had been flying around trapped beneath the overcast sky ever since John first brought Loas into existence by his arrival. And paradoxically, they had been imprisoned there for ages even before that. Such is the way of our lands. They are newly born the day we arrive, and yet they always were. Video games for ya. To free the fireflies, John would have to play a special song. It had to be played just right to summon the breeze through the pipes. But there was a problem. The pipes are all clogged with oil. The first day John came to his land, oil began oozing up from the core, flooding the pipes and filling the oceans. To play the song, first he would need to clean up the oil, and to do that he would need to face the slumbering one himself. He would need to face Typhius. But as he wandered through the catacombs down to the planet's core, he wasn't thinking about freeing fireflies or cleaning up oil. He was seeking the help of his denizen to master a power he couldn't control. Luckily for him, denizens always seem to understand what you want, and more importantly, what you need, whether you know it or not. Is something wrong, Callie? Hmm? Go ahead and draw Typhius. Oh, uh, yes, um, you do know what he looks like, don't you? I believe I do. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just draw a big green snake monster. A big green snake monster, you say? Uh, yes, a snake monster with the most unspeakably hideous face you can imagine. But you don't have to be it's too literal about 30. that. Shut up. I'm reading. Feel free to draw something a little more representational. Um, I'm not sure if I'm particularly comfortable entering such imagery. Why not? It strikes me as rather indecent. For reasons I would be too embarrassed to explain. <laughs> oh, for Callie, it's like drawing porn. <laughs> That's okay. Why don't I draw it? Very well, but you must excuse me if I giggle. Okay, but I don't see what's so indecent about a big old snake. Tee <laughs> <laughs> Nice porn. <laughs> when John got to the core, he arrived to find Typhius awake and ready for him. <laughs> He was then presented with the choice. <laughs> Stop, you're gonna make me crack up too. This part is serious. I, I apologize, please. <laughs> Go on. He's all glitchy too, yo. <laughs> His choice was presented as a kind of riddle, spoken in a language only he could understand, spelling out the conditions he must accept. But speaking from experience, once a player is given the choice between two courses of action, it will hardly feel like a choice at all. If the heart is in the right place, then the right thing to do always seems obvious. So John accepted his denizen's terms, and with that... Hussey leaves us on a cliffhanger. Hooray! <sighs> kind of sucks when you start walking home. And like, it starts raining. And then stuff gets wet, and you're like, damn it. Whew, fleece and rain don't get along very well. So, and with that, Typhius opened valves to the core flooded it with oil. 
There was no way out. He could not transform into wind because he was completely submerged, so he was faced with two possibilities. Either he could figure out how to make himself disappear, completely, using the ability he hoped to master, or he could drown in the oil. Ooh, that's a little dark. Drowning obviously would have been bad, but disappearing wouldn't be much better. He would appear somewhere else, having made no progress on his personal quest. His planet would still be polluted, and he would be no closer to playing his song. Somehow, he understood the only way was to conceive of a third option, an idea beyond the simple binary set of outcomes before him. And interestingly, it was coming to this understanding which gave him the first glimpse of how to control the power. He realized it wasn't himself that he needed to make disappear. It was the oil. He dispersed every drop throughout existence. That's a very... voidy... thi... Oh. Really? Wait, aren't these the locations where the hands are? Or is it different locations? We got another cosmic retcon, huh? <laughs> Interesting. So there's just gonna be oil fucking randomly splattered around on various things? leaving a little mark for anyone who might notice, signifying his final mastery over his confining reality. Hmm. Memory lane. <laughs> With a hand. <laughs> you got oil in Dave's selfie picture? I was like, on it, but that's in it. <laughs> but more importantly, leaving his planet clean. And the pipe's clear. Finally, they were ready to let the breeze, 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 flow, so he could play his song. <sighs> that was a very short update. I guess I could say a lot happened, but not really. Massive cosmic retcons, hussy. This storytelling procedure... <laughs> See, anybody who's seen my extras video knows that I own the books. At least the first two. I haven't gotten the third yet. And... My understanding is... The copy I have doesn't even have hands in it. And it makes me wonder, is he going to edit that in future editions? I mean, granted, Homestuck doesn't really translate well to book form. I kind of got these mostly for shiggles, <laughs> like just to say I had them, and the author's notes, though I could have found those online, I suppose. But when he goes through and edits the story, much as that's really cool for us people keeping up with it, it... It alienates anybody else who was reading Homestuck after the fact, I think, because the impact of such a thing is really dependent on serial reading. So, cool in theory, mildly cool in execution, overall probably not such a cool idea, though. Like, when you really think of the, the long-term consequences of those kinds of things. I know there have been live blogs, um unlike mine, who have noticed the arms, and 
I think that a better method of executing this, to be honest, would be to, you know, have a first-time reader's read-through so that when they get to the point of where, like, the hands would show up or the oil would show up, then the links would change at that point to, you know, the, the retcon version. I really don't think it's such a good idea to just on a global scale leave it that way. But it's not my story, so I digress. That being said, we're almost to MSPA page 9000. How neat is that? Okay, that's enough rambling. <sighs> Had a rather harrowing morning after Christmas, Christmas, Thanksgiving. I'm way ahead of myself. So, it's time to enjoy an S page. It's an unusual choice. Wait, he popped the cartridge out entirely. Won't that be bad? Well, that was... Eh, interesting? Not the song I was expecting him to play. Doctor, Showtime... Uh, the Ghostbusters theme... How do I live without you? But Harlequin? Just, I don't know. It's really not John's leitmotif, so... I don't know. Weird. So now we'll get the small update out of the way. <laughs> Looks like Seb put it back in. Oh. Hey, there's fireflies everywhere. I should start singing fireflies. Oh, Lois is so pretty. It looks like a blue moon. Wow. Oh man, it's been a while since we did one of these. It looks so different. It's fireflies. Where are we going? Oh. The village. Walking down. Car is still there. <laughs> R.I.P. Dad's car. <laughs> what is this? Google Maps? It's just like... It's like we're hearkening back to... What was that? Act 4?
Roxy! Roxy, what are you doing here? What's up? That's it? Am I supposed to click the next page now? I'm confused. Like, it's giving me clicky options? I guess that means it's over. Okay. What the hell? You find a spunky babe in a cool blue outfit hanging on your planet. She doesn't belong here. What the hell's going on, you wonder loudly. I'm confused. You interrogate the rogue teen babe for answers. You mean girl. Rogue teen girl. Um. Sup? Sup? Great. Um. Hussy? What the fuck? Sometimes this man it just operates so strangely. I really have to use the restroom. Good night. It's the pretty much entire day today writing what turned out to be a 14 page economics paper. So I'm pooped. Let's do some homestuck. Hopefully Roxy's not fucking broken. Roxy? What's up? What are you doing here? I thought you were going to see your denizen. I did. You did? Yeah. How did it go? It went okay. Yeah? What happened? Oh, you know, ventured to spooky subterranean lair for a bit of cathartic and life-altering monster rail talk. Okay, that is a funny way of putting it. But yeah, me too. Yep, I figured your monster quest happened. I mean, once the gross black shit disappeared and the wind started blowing like a motherfucker. Uh, what did your monster say? I mean, your. Hey, maybe we should try to be more respectful about our god monsters. Her name's Nyx. Okay, sometimes I can't tell, like, are the typos intentional with Roxy, or is that or an actual typo? Right. What did Nick say? Did she speak in the weird babbly language that you could still understand somehow, even though it made no sense? It's like, yes, it was downright incomprehensible in the most mysteriously understandable way. <laughs> she told me this riddle thing that basically spread it all out for me. Like, my options were, what happened if I did the options, and like, the metaphysical and moral consequences of those options? Yeah, Typhius pretty much did the same thing with me. Typhius was the name of my snake monster, by the way. Ew, you had a snake monster? Yes, he was awesome. So did Nyx give you some sort of challenge to overcome, which by doing so you could get in touch with your powers? Uh, which enabled you to appear here by doing, like, this incredible voidy thing that let you phase out of existence and magically appear within this weird plane of reality? <laughs> well, no, she pretty much just told me to fly to your planet, so I did. But then how did you get here? <coughs> did John take her? Huh. You mean, like... You just wrapped up your conversation with her, left her lair, and then flew to Loas? <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> and then if I oh, you know, right? <laughs> wow, what a quest. You know. Um, I'm stupid. But when you think about it, it was the toast obvious thing to do. I didn't know it at the time, but you were going to make your whole planet disappear. So if I wanted to keep persisting through your history, altering hijinks, then all I would have to do is, uh, come along for the ride. No monsterly night magics needed. Yeah, that makes sense. There were stipulations, though, and stips, if you will, vis-a-vis -vis buttloads of opaque goddess riddles. My tongue is a little bit numb. I had some origel earlier, so I'm having a bit of trouble speaking. Vis-a-vis. -vis. Forgot my liaison doesn't carry over on the second V. Right, you mean the choice thing? Yes. What were the mad stips? She said, keep in mind I'm paraphrasing. If paraphrasing is even a thing you can do with stuff said in unfathomable monster jargon, that either I could stay behind and vanish into nothingness forever, and ever in the new reality would inherit all the big time responsibilities, including a version of myself who had no memory of all this and never experience all the loss and sadness I just went through, or I could go with you, but in doing so, everyone I love would know that loss instead. Whatever that means. Yeah, Typhius gave me almost the exact same sort of choice, 
something about other people feeling the loss I felt if I accepted his challenge, which I'm sure is probably not good. But I mean, what else was I going to do? I couldn't just let things stay the way they were. Yes, exactly. Her caveat sounded ominous as shit, but there was something that didn't sit well with me about doing nothing. Accepting her terms just felt right, you know? Yes. So, here I am. Yes. <laughs> Maybe I should smooch. Totally gonna smooch. I'm glad it worked out like this. I was fully prepared to do this alone. To top around and change things in whatever way. And I get to see my friends again, even if they don't remember all the same stuff I do. Which is a lonely feeling, if that makes sense. But now I'll have someone else to remember the way things originally went. Word. Yes, word indeed. Bit, I know what you mean. It's nice to have a... Like a witness, I guess? Someone to authenticate the rough shit you went through. Even if you never end up talking about it again. The fact that at least someone else knows... It makes it feel like it didn't all mean nothing. Right. Because even if it all gets erased and put all back together better, I didn't think the stuff we went through and the feelings we had meant nothing. I am the feelings themselves and the way they shaped us. That all means something. I <laughs> forget it. Took out my ass here. No, it makes sense. And anyway, if nothing else, everything that happened brought us here. The stuff we're about to do, whatever it is, wouldn't be possible otherwise. And that feels pretty important if you ask me. Wow, it's so pretty. Where are you guys going? So, oh, that wins. That was you, right? Yes. Hmm, I didn't see any glitchy trash. Guess your humongous blowy spell did away with all that grody nonsense. Oh, yeah, I guess you're right. I didn't even notice until you just mentioned it, but yeah, I guess that dumb problem is finally busted. Thank God. For real. I heard music, too. Did you hear music? Yes, that was me, too. I was playing a magic organ. Oh, really? Yes, see, there's this huge organ. That is almost certainly what she said. Wonk. Oh, shush. Anyway, this huge pipe organ. It let me play the breeze, so to speak. I think that was the only way to get rid of all those clouds and let the fireflies go home. This is their home, huh? I guess so. I'm surprised by how the quest turned out, too, to be honest. It is kind of bittersweet. Sing on the Twinkly Herbert brothers and sisters, give him home. Twinkly who? My pet firefly. I'm guessing this is where he was from. Oh. They all seem happy, though. Look at them all blinking away into the blank-ass yonder. <laughs> Why is this guy blank, baby? It's blank because it's nothing. Nothing? Why is it nothing? Where even are we? It's nothing because we are literally nowhere. Uh... Okay, how can you tell it's actually a field of nothingness as opposed to just a bunch of regular empty space that happens to look vaguely neutral? How can I tell? I guess I just can. No, but how? Why don't you ask yourself? You're the one who asked me what was blank in the first place. So why did you use the term blank in your question? Damn, owned at the philosophies. So owned. You will find I am the best there is at those. It's true. I'm always getting owned at those by you and your Ken. Recently, your crazy dog sister was schooling me on perfectly generic cubes. You mean generic objects. Generic fort blocks, yes. Now you're dropping truth bombs about blank skies on me. Shouldn't I be, like, innately stellar at this sort of stuff as a void player? I see coming off slow as fuck on the uptake here, aren't I? Not really. You seem pretty smart to me. I do? Yeah, you have a funny and snappy way of talking, like Dave. But unlike that knucklehead, I sense that behind all your jokes, you're probably the same kind of brainiac like Rose. Wow. Don't get me wrong, I'm a knucklehead in a good way. Dave is actually the best dude. You would like him. I bet you are correct. So, Dave, he's, uh, my son, right? Ugh. I mean, yes, pretty much. Honestly, it gets weird to think about all our relations in that way sometimes. I get ya. I couldn't think about how you and Wolf Jade being the kids of Jane and Jake, I... I... <laughs> Gee, that's so cute! Um... So, what is it you think's weird about Dave being my son? I think we should just change the subject. <laughs> Alright, what were we talking about again? We were talking about blank skies and fort blocks and such. Oh, yes. And you thought you should know more about things like that as a void hero. Which reminds me, do you think you're any closer to making that alien egg? Hmm. I mean, after seeing Nyx, did you feel like a power boost or anything? A power boost? Like Mega Man or... <laughs> Finally, she shows her gamerness. 
you know, she's supposed to be touted as, like, this old school gamer, and she makes, like, no gaming references whatsoever, and now she finally did. Yay! You know, not like Mega Man. I mean, like, you're asking if she taught me to do the voidy thing. Well, did she? No, nah, dude, I told you. We did our chat in some horseshit elven baloney tongue, and she just told me to come here. Like, that's literally it. Go to the planet if you want to live. So I did. There wasn't really any soul-searching or getting in touch with my inner miracles. Oh, well, that's kind of a bummer. I hope you weren't shortchanged out of an important mystical and spiritual process of self-discovery. <laughs> <laughs> what? Sorry, it's just, sometimes you sound so much like Jake, it's really quite uncanny. But yeah, I don't care about that, really. It was either take an uneventful and non-spiritual trip to a wind planet, or just stop existing altogether. I think I'll be fine without the self-discovery part. Yeah, or... Wait. What if this was part of it? Part of what? Your quest? Like, to be here and learn to use your powers better. We're kind of in a realm of literal nothingness right now. Maybe you'll be able to draw energy or inspiration from the void or whatever? Nix? Wait, oh, slat? Oh, bitch. Does that make sense? It kind of does. It kind of loads does. Oh, sweet. I was just grasping at straws there, but now that you agree, I'm suddenly a lot more confident in my theory. <laughs> yeah. Cake. So, why don't you try it out again? Wait, the egg? Like, right now? Sure. Eh, to be aged, I'm sick of trying to summon that ugly damn egg. How about later? I'd rather just keep BSing with you for a while rather than get right down to freaking business. I guess there's really no hurry. Not in this place, at least. I don't think this place has any bearing on other timelines. It's almost like taking a time out from our canonical lives. So if you wanted, we could take as much time to practice here as you need. It's down as heck with that. I could use a breather for my canonical life. Me too. Even though I'm not sure I have one anymore? Dun dun. Whew, that was a lot of talking.